as more and more players are getting their hands on Liu Che and testing him out with other infantry commanders we're finding out that smite damage is a big deal smite damage could very well change the meta in rise of kingdoms forever and players are even going back and testing Liu Che with some older commanders like Alexander the Great and even Constantine because in case you guys forgot Constantine does actually have a relic now and part of that relic is a nice chunk of infantry attack and five percent more normal attack damage which when paired with Liu Che is just five percent more damage on his super powerful active skill and some players are even going a step farther and testing out Liu Che as a secondary to Attila now I don't actually think that there's really that much synergy here unless you're playing in a KVK where you can change the troop type but as more and more players are experimenting with these different out of the box combinations it got me to thinking what commanders in rise of kingdoms could actually be good with smite damage if smite damage was introduced for their troop type so what I mean by this is Liu Che is an infantry commander but what if we get smite damage for cavalry and archers and do we already have confirmation that smite damage is coming to those troop types well that's everything that we're going to talk about in this video but first what's going on guys cheers as you can see behind me I haven't fully set up my new room yet it's still got some empty shelves back there but the good news is that you can't really see my bed back there which means I don't have to make my bed every time I film a video which is amazing for the past few years I've had to do that my bed could be a complete mess right now and you wouldn't even know it and that is such a luxury for me anyway let's start off here with this mail that we got a few weeks ago from the developers it was a face-to-face -face with the developers and we also touched on this mail in a couple of videos ago but I just want to hone in on this one question here why introduce smite damage instead of enhancing normal attacks okay and in the answer from the developers directly they found that basically skill damage and skill damage related buffs were increasingly more important and therefore they wanted to introduce a new concept to open up new strategic avenues for you to experiment with and then they go on to say commanders that rely on normal attack damage buffs to deal damage with the example they give as Attila previously lacked means of dealing burst damage like skill damage further enhancing normal attack buffs was not enough to solve this problem thus we added smite damage which deals high burst damage while synergizing with normal attack commanders so in the official response from the developers we see that they had Attila in mind when they were developing the smite damage formula they thought about Attila and thought okay how can we get a commander like Attila to have synergy with high burst damage so to me that tells me that they are planning on implementing smite damage to cavalry as well now we don't know about archers but in my mind if they implement it for infantry and they also implement it for cavalry I think it only makes sense that they would also implement it for archers now I could be wrong about this they could just go even harder on skill damage for archers and give them other interesting things like we see on Boudicca Prime and Juga Leong where they have the ability to remove control effects for example like those are really interesting things we see that on a Manatore as well she can't be silenced right so perhaps they won't give smite damage to archers and they'll just make them powerful in other ways but my opinion is that I think this is kind of confirmation that we're going to be getting smite damage for all troop types. I think it's a no brainer. I think that's what's coming based on this answer from the developers. So let's start with cavalry because I think that there's going to be a lot of older commanders and some newer commanders that are going to see even more play and become even more powerful just by them introducing a smite damage commander of the cavalry type and the first commander we're going to talk about is the commander that apparently they based smite damage on and that is Attila now why would they consider Attila when needing burst damage okay and the answer to that is because his active skill here gives him four seconds of 30 percent increased normal encounter attack damage with a 50 percent chance to reduce the target's attack by 50 percent this is extremely powerful and when Attila first came into the game a lot of you may not remember this because you weren't playing at that time but he was essentially unstoppable when paired with Takeda this was the god combo or rallies there was nothing you could do about it with the attack tree and the bonus normal attack damage you could not swarm this down you would be severely punished for doing so and 
there really wasn't a great strategy to defend against it either it was extremely strong and i think because of how game-changing attila and takeda were as a rally pair i think the developers have sort of strayed away from really powerful normal and counter-attack buffs for long periods of time i think they realized that it's really hard to maybe balance this in a fair way i'm not really sure but we haven't really seen a commander like attila or takeda for that matter since their introduction but now that we see them introducing smite damage i think this could bring more eyes back on attila i think that we've progressed down the power creep path for a long time when it comes to skill damage that they can go back to something like attila and justify giving him a buff by essentially handing you a new commander with smite damage that would scale off of his active skill so essentially what i think could happen is if we get a smite damage cavalry commander whether it's aoe whether it's single target it doesn't really matter if you put them as secondary to attila then when their active skill goes off their whatever their damage factor is for their smite damage they're going to be dealing 30 percent increased damage because of this active skill which is insane but also if you look at the expertise on attila it says when an enemy has less than 50 percent of units remaining normal attacks against it deal 20 percent increased damage this is insane for a rally scenario we could literally see a return of an attila rally meta and again i know we've seen like Attila Nevsky for example like that's kind of a thing but if we have a smite damage cavalry commander that synergizes with all of these insane buffs normal attacks I feel like Attila rallies not only could be viable again but could literally be the best possible rally that you could do with cavalry and that's honestly shocking it is mind-blowing to consider that that could be in our future but Attila is not the only cavalry commander that could see revitalization by the implementation of smite damage we also have to look at Takeda now these two obviously Attila and Takeda have amazing synergy together but if you have a smite damage commander Takeda could be really interesting if you look at his active skill it says that he inflicts a burn effect on the target for four seconds giving all normal attacks against the target a 50% chance to deal 50% increased damage. Now, what I want to know is if your smite damage is going off of normal attack buffs, is it also considered a normal attack against the target? I don't think it is, but could we possibly see a massive blow to targets that are inflicted by burn from Takeda? I mean, that could be really cool. But even if this active skill doesn't influence smite damage at all, you have to look at the expertise here. It says that you'll deal 30% increased normal attack damage to targets with the burning effect. So even if the burning effect itself is not influenced by smite damage, this normal attack damage buff certainly will be okay. So 30% more normal attack damage. That's insane right that's insane now the downside of this is that if you want to time the active skill of the smite damage cavalry commander he will have to be a secondary to Takeda and that's not looking too great here okay so this could have good synergy it depends if the smite damage commander for cavalry has instant proc smite damage then you could potentially have Takeda secondary and maybe that instant proc damage could trigger during this bonus and just deal 30 percent more which would be insane so I definitely think that a lot of players are going to be playing around with Takeda when it comes to pairing him with smite damage but I also want to talk about Bertrand because here's the thing we see with Luce and with Gorgo that they not only bring smite damage to the table but they also bring another new mechanic both of them do where you have an increased chance or a chance to launch an additional normal attack on any given turn so if we continue the trend of all smite damage commanders having the ability to launch more normal attacks which by the way that might not be the case it could just be the case that for the first two they were playing around with this idea in the future this might they might not go hand in hand anymore but if they do then Bertrand's active skill kind of becomes like Sargon's active skill for the next three seconds you have a 100 chance of dealing 700 damage factor and reducing their rage by 20. 
so with what is what does this mean if you get an extra normal attack in here that will increase the total damage from 2100 to 2800 but also instead of reducing their rage by 60 it'll reduce it by 80. that's a 33 percent increase in effectiveness and it wouldn't happen every active skill cycle but i think it would happen pretty frequently depending on how likely the extra normal attacks are to occur for example on Liu Che, there's a 25 percent chance we don't know if this could come to cavalry as well and if it is 25 percent for them as well that would be crazy and who knows maybe we'll see a little bit of a bertrand comeback but shifting gears from rallies to garrisons we have to look at Jan Ziska his fourth skill says when launching a normal attack they have a 10 percent chance of gaining a buff that increases the normal attack damage dealt by 20 percent for three seconds with an eight second cooldown now first of all if the cavalry commander does get bonus normal attacks just like Liu Che then there's some nice synergy there because this is going to trigger a little bit more often I think the cooldown is so long that it's it's still going to be pretty rare but the main thing here is that you're going to get 20 percent increased normal attack damage for three seconds that could be really powerful in a garrison scenario and I think Jan Ziska is already pretty good in garrisons right so could we see a smite damage garrison meta for cavalry because of this skill on Jan Ziska, we're going to have to wait and see. Moving on to some newer commanders, let's talk about Huo, right? I think if you look at his third skill in general, I think people love this skill because it makes your active skills, at least at first, go off faster. You have a ton of extra skill damage here, which is amazing. But the part that people really don't love is the 10% normal attack damage bonus that occurs after the 15 seconds. But imagine you pair this with a smite damage cavalry commander. Well, now both Huo and the smite damage cavalry commander will enjoy the reduced rage requirement. Huo will love the 30% bonus skill damage and the other smite damage commander is going to love the bonus 10% normal attack damage because that's effectively a 10% increase in damage that they're dealing from their smite damage active skill, which I think could be really good. And we might not even know about the best possible Huo pairing yet. Like, I think a lot of players kind of, you know, were lukewarm about Huo, even though I think he's quite good. I mean, yeah, he's not Nevsky, but he's still good. What if they were a little bit tame on Huo because they suspect that he could be broken with an upcoming smite damage cavalry commander? Like, what if Huo's best possible insanely broken pairing is smite damage that would be insane now you could also make the argument that it's probably better to still pair him with a skill damage commander because the 30 percent skill damage bonus is bigger than the 10 percent normal attack damage bonus which makes sense completely but again it's just something to think about and finally it's worth mentioning Joan of Arc here okay I think on her second skill the five percent more normal attack damage is very small but it could be nice and also we have one turn of 30 percent more normal attack damage which is really good I also wonder like this says when using skills troops led by this commander gain a buff that increases normal attack damage for one second I wonder if if she's secondary okay and you have a smite damage commander as primary typically in the battle reports you'll see like at the very bottom it says like such and such commander is getting ready to cast their active skill in the next turn if the smite damage commander has damage over time then it's possible that they'll cast their skill and for one of the turns it, the damage is going to be increased by 30 percent like there could be some synergy there that maybe we're not really seeing and that would be amazing that would be another slam dunk pairing for Joan of Arc now just like Huo I'm less confident in this pairing as opposed to like Attila and Takeda for example because I do think that with massive amounts of skill damage on Joan you probably still want to pair her with someone that's dealing massive amounts of skill damage but anything could happen and it could be interesting to try out if we do get a smite damage cavalry commander in the future next I want to shift gears over to archers for a moment and if we take a look at Thutmose right this is a commander that is often overlooked by older players because they see him as a gold key commander and basically just forget all about him and honestly with his double relic he's actually decent in season of conquest now I'm not saying you should invest in him but I'm saying like he's actually not bad but if we look at his expertise here it says whenever this commander uses an active skill their troops gain 30 percent bonus normal attack damage for three seconds now it's a very long cooldown here but if you have a Thutmo's primary and you have a smite damage archer as secondary then their active skill will trigger 
during the three seconds that you'll have a 30 percent bonus to normal attack damage and therefore a 30 percent bonus to their smite damage which i think could be really really crazy and the rest of the moses kit is pretty well rounded like it's not that bad could we possibly see more players using thutmose in the open field in the future with smite damage it might be i mean it's not like he has an insane amount of skill damage here that you want to just stack a bunch of skill damage bonuses on him like yes that's good but it's not like you know it's not like he's Ong where he's dealing like 2000 to five targets i mean this is 1000 to three targets it's, it's not that it's not that crazy but another commander that we have to talk about is actually edward of woodstock now hear me out okay i know that like this is a meme and realistically is edward ever going to come back into the meta probably not but like he has sort of a little bit of hope here because if you look at his expertise it says for the next two seconds after using an active skill all normal attacks and counter attacks deal 50 percent increased damage now there's a chance that the timing here could be messed up right but if you have edward primary 50 percent more normal attack damage for two seconds well i just ran a quick test here with edward and el Cid, just for the memes my edward of woodstock fires off his active skill on turn 14 but his expertise says for two seconds after he'll get 50 percent more normal attack damage so two turns after this would be turn 15 and turn 16 and turn 16 is where we cast the active skill of our secondary commander so for the purposes of this example if el Cid were a smite damage commander then could his active skill be boosted by 50 percent just because of the edward of woodstock expertise i mean that is kind of insane now i believe when his relic comes into the game it's going to give archer defense and a small bump to active skill damage i think it's 100 plus 150 here so you know his relic isn't that crazy but it is a nice little bonus and you know i know the rage requirement here is is very high um i wish that they would just reduce this as part of his relic maybe i don't know but like we have a ton of health we have a ton of march speed and who knows maybe this 50 percent increased damage could give Edward slightly more play I know that's hopium I know that's copium I know that's not gonna happen but like maybe next let's talk about Cyrus I feel like nobody really talks about Cyrus anymore and again if we assume that an archer smite damage commander will have also a chance to gain extra normal attacks like we see with Liu Che and Gorgo then what happens with the third skill here on Cyrus it says when troops led by this commander because of only archers their normal attacks gain a 10 percent chance to deal damage over time for three seconds so that's 250 for three seconds that's 750 bonus damage now while this is in effect the target deals 20 percent reduced skill damage but could we see something similar to sargon where he deals additional damage like a fourth additional damage factor like if he deals you know i know this is this is measuring it by time in seconds rather than number of normal attacks right but it it's possible that like the wording here isn't very clear and it's possible that it's not clear because it never really needed to be clear until now seconds and turns have effectively been interchangeable for all of rise of kingdoms history and turns have gone hand in hand with normal attacks again since the beginning of the game and only now is that really there's some nuance there right so possibly could we see that this deals a, a total of a thousand damage factor if a extra normal attack is triggered during this window maybe maybe not but there could be a little bit of synergy here which i think is interesting because cyrus again just doesn't get that much love these days the big one for me though is artonesia and i talked about this a little bit in my recent video where i talked about five 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 one commanders but artonesia's fourth skill here is like built for smite damage this is actually insane when this commander's rage meter reaches 80 percent there's a 50 percent chance to silence herself for three seconds and at the same time grant her troops 50 percent increased damage for five seconds that's kind of crazy now this isn't normal attack damage but i mean still we don't have that many things that boost smite damage right like a 50 percent bonus to skill damage is pretty common it's literally on ysg and he's in the game since the beginning okay but a 50 percent bonus to all damage would apply to smite damage and i think that that could be kind of crazy but it doesn't stop there because if archers also get the chance to grant an extra normal attack then you will have an increased probability of triggering her expertise now this is a pro and a con because you'll have a higher chance of dealing that 400 damage factor but you'll have a higher chance of giving the target 15 percent more skill damage so it's like 
it is what it is but also if your artemisia is attacking a luce in the open field for example then they don't care if they get more skill damage it literally doesn't matter to them luce doesn't scale off of skill damage so really you don't you lose this uh downside basically if you give this to a smite damage commander because it does nothing so could be a little bit of synergy here for artemisia could she possibly hang on for a little bit longer it's totally possible her active skill is still very strong her stats are still incredible and if the smite damage archer has a chance to remove this self silence just like we see on the expertise for Boudica and just like we see on the second skill for Duge Leong and also like we see on the expertise for Amanatore, uh, then she could she could have another uh, another year left in her from the point that we get a smite damage archer it's possible and then finally let's talk about Henry here and I actually misspoke in my video where I talked about five 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 one commanders and I miss I, I misspoke about the expertise here it says when a troops rage reaches 70 percent they start to deal 30 percent more normal attack damage otherwise so for a majority of the rage meter you are going to take 20 percent less normal attack damage now if you have a smite damage archer as your primary commander okay there might be a way to time this you may miss the timing and i and i'm actually thinking that you probably will miss the timing here but it, it will be something that players will have to test if that smite damage archer triggers his active skill right at the 100 mark of your rage meter like it's that's the max your rage could be is when you cast your active skill will it gain 30 percent more damage or will your rage meter go immediately to zero and then you're back to actually just taking less normal attack damage there could be some synergy here which I think could be really nice and finally Boudicca Prime's third skill okay the second half here that talks about normal attack damage bonuses is usually overlooked because it's only for one turn it's on your next normal attack okay and this is only when you take skill damage but there could be some instances where you have an overlap here between this bonus and the active skill on your smite damage archer right if the enemy launches their active skill between the skill cycles of your Boudicca and your smite damage archer or if your smite damage archer is primary for example then the next turn you could trigger either a 25 percent or 50 percent bonus to normal attack damage and if that lands on the same turn that you launch your smite damage from whatever archer is coming you could have an absolute nuke on your hands for that turn which I think could be pretty insane and there is a cooldown here but each one can trigger independently every seven seconds so I mean it could happen more than you think and we didn't need more reason to invest in Boudicca and yet there could be some synergy there that we still have yet to unlock anyway I just wanted to do some theory crafting here for smite damage for the other troop types these are some commanders that you should keep your eyes on and consider when and if they ever implement more smite damage commanders for the other troop types in rise of kingdoms if you made it to the end of this video I hope you'll drop a thumbs up on the video it'll really help out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there comment down below which of these commanders are you most excited to see synergize with smite damage I'm I'm most excited for Attila and Takeda I think these two could really pop off again with smite damage for cavalry so I would love to see what happens next there but let me know what you think in the comments section below and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace